peer pressure is a door that works both ways. And I'm sure, being as a youth, I'm, I'm changing my I'm changing my pitch a little bit because of the audience involved here. But like everything, peer pressure works both ways. Everybody is envious of the crowd, which is the cool ones, the ones that seem to, you know, have have all of the attraction. Uh, they're very cliquish and, and and all of that. Jesus in his day in the Book of Acts was very counterculture. He looked at everything that the world desired and the world wanted, and he said, I want none of that. And he led people to want to have the exact opposite. It's in the nature of the human flesh to be rebellious. I'm sure the pastor has spoke of rebellious spirit. Take that nature and turn it from bad into something good. Rebel for God against the world. When you go out, go out as two or three. If you if you look like you're just a soul, a single person out there without any friends, you're not looking like you're having any fun. Think about it. Be creative. What is it that attracts you to a group of people that that when if you're walking down the street and you see a bunch of people together. What would be, on first impression, that makes you say, I want to be a part of that? What makes you think, you know, I want to be those people's friends? Everybody needs friends. Everybody's looking for friends. What is it that is appealing? And don't look at the worldly aspect of it. Look at the body language. Look at how they interact with each other. If they, if they look like they're having fun together, if they look like they're really affirming each other, they're not being critical of each other, they're not fighting, they're not arguing, they're not bickering. It's very attractive. That is shining your light. And there's there's many, many, many things here. A lot to cover. The church primarily met at homes. The primary focus of the modern church is this church building. And I know my brother here, Pastor Sean, is wanting you to gather people into the church. But, before you can gather them into the church, I highly recommend that you gather them into your inner circle. Gather them into your home. Get to where you can go to their homes. They can go to your homes. You're hanging out together. At that point, you can then lead them to the larger body. What the church did was they had two modes. To those that were outside of the church, they were treated in one fashion. Those that were inside the church are treated another fashion. You've got your inner circle and your outer circle, the inner court and outer court of the temple. And the body of Christ, your physical body, is the temple of God, not this building. This can happen anywhere. These guys in the book of Acts were gathering in uh, playground areas, public locations, in caves, hiding out in the woods. When they were hunted and persecuted by the government, it didn't stop them. They had each other. It's that togetherness, that charisma. And a lot of what motivates street gangs nowadays is that togetherness, that part of being a group, that association of, of having a part of something. Street gangs have a different motivation though. Okay, they're looking towards worldly things. They're looking at selfish and sinful and self-serving things. And I personally feel that if you could get that street gang mentality of, I guess, thugs for Christ. I don't know. I'm, I'm, this is not a. This is, this is not an area where I'm an expert in clearly. But from the Book of Acts pattern, it would fit. That you you build relationships as friends, as family, as brothers and sisters, 
and you meet the need that you come across. Before, and it's always been a very truthful thing, before you can touch anybody spiritually, you must first meet their physical needs. If they need somebody to talk to, if they need a friend, if they've got some kind of a problem, some kind of an issue, they need somebody to confide in. I'm saying don't be a gossiper, but be there for them. Before they can even address anything in their spiritual life, they've got to first deal with the issues they have in their physical life. And what they need is peers. They need people that can relate to them, that can say, you know, I know how you feel, I know what you're going through. And I know many of you have been there and done that. And it's time to turn around now and be there for these lost in the same fashion that somebody was there for you. That first, before they could give you what you needed spiritually, they touched your life physically. That's part of the kingdom of heaven. This is not rocket science. It's a simple message. It's the message of Jesus Christ in the cross. There's no need to get into doctrine. There's no need to get into high theological speak. That comes later. And that comes through the Holy Spirit anointing. And it's the Holy Spirit that will bring remembrance of what these doctrines are. Once you have your prayer life established, and once you have that relationship established, from there you start to grow. But it's getting that first establishment. The early church met in homes. They met out in the streets. They evangelized out in the streets. If it's one thing that has frustrated me so much with the church today, and the church is in decline because they don't seem to understand, that Sunday morning sermon and altar call, looking to convict people of the Spirit and bring them to the altar, that has no place inside the church. No place inside these four walls. That needs to be out there in the street corner. That needs to be out there in the parking lot. That needs to be out there to the people. Because if you've got somebody that shows up in your congregation more than three times in a row, three Sundays in a row you see the same face, preaching to them like they're lost isn't doing them no good. They already got the message. That's why they're here. At that point, you start feeding them the kingdom stuff. You start giving them the meat. They've already got the milk. You've already got them hooked. Have they been baptized? That's another thing. Every person that is of the kingdom of God has a job in the kingdom. You're hired as laborers in the field. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He's a, he's a man of action. As James says, I'm not saved by my works, but my I show my works, my, my faith by my works. If you don't believe in this, it's not going to motivate you to do anything. And there are so many people that when they first come into the church, their, their heart and mind says, what is there that I can do? And so many pastors to say, well, I really don't have anything for you to do. Because... They're not geared towards thinking that way. Try to understand I'm not talking about reformation of the church. I'm not talking about starting some kind of a new church or new movement. I'm talking about reading what is in the book and doing it. It's been here all along. Be obedient to what is there and do it. It's nothing new. It is radical. 